guys, it's Danny. Alrighty, today we're gonna talk about stabilizing orchids in their pots. This is something I kind of mentioned yesterday as well in a little text on the video. And I think it's important, especially for stressed orchids, new orchids that we want to root in a new medium and so on and so forth. Before we go ahead and do that though, I want to tell you a few things. I'll put a timestamp somewhere on the screen so you can skip to that minute of the video if you just want to skip my whole blabbing session and get to the subject. But anyway, I wanted to tell you guys that I started to post on Facebook as well and on Instagram some stuff, which I don't think it's any secret. I'm not a social animal. I don't really enjoy social media all that much. However, I had some thinking sessions with myself and based on what happened in December with YouTube, I'll not go into it, everything is okay, but as always, YouTube has issues sometimes and some people have suffered quite the revenue cut because of it. And these people had employees, so the stress I imagine was pretty pretty bad for them. I'm okay, don't worry about me, I don't have employees or editors or anybody to pay, so I'm okay. But I thought about it, you know how that saying goes, don't put all of your eggs in the same basket? Well, that's what I'm doing with YouTube. I don't have any other platform that I'm present on and YouTube doesn't really have an equivalent. The only thing that, let's say, maybe can compete with YouTube is Facebook. I don't know how this thing will develop in the future. Five years ago, I never dreamed that it would bring me with my boyfriend. What if in the future, YouTube will give me some other opportunities and I will have people depending on me. YouTube is not stable, it will not guarantee things. The thing with YouTube is you earn as much as you work. If you don't work, you don't earn, full stop, which is okay by me. It's actually what I prefer. And now, you know, I'm not such a big channel. I don't have a production team behind me and things of the sorts, but this doesn't mean that in the future I won't. You never know where things can go. It can very well go on the path of, you know what, YouTube is shutting down or is excluding me from the platform or I just give up and go back to my job or my business or whatever I was doing before this. That can happen as well, but Thinking about it, it just seems silly to not try to actually prolong this thing that I like just because I don't like Facebook or social media. And so I decided to start diversifying a little bit. So bottom line, I do have a Facebook page. I got some apps that show me comments, so I'll try to answer some comments as well. If you're on Facebook and you like it and you prefer it, uh, check my page down below, give me a like, give me a follow, whatever you want to stay in contact with me. All I wanted to say is that I'm trying to branch out and to diversify and not just be at the mercy of YouTube. And now, yeah, I'm not affected, I can go back to work, but what in a few years, I will have people depending on me. It's a horrible position to let people down with this. I don't wanna be that person. Even if it might never happen, I just wanna have backup plans. So that's what I wanted to tell you guys. Let's go back to the video. Alrighty, so yesterday we were talking about assisting or helping orchids recover from root loss and one of the things that I said was maintaining the orchid stable in her pot just so the new root tips don't get damaged by the coarseness of the medium. There are some media which indeed pose a threat of this happening and just for the sake of being very clear, we are going to talk about potted orchids in this video. Obviously, if you mount an orchid, you just tie it to the mount and hey presto, you have a stabilized orchid. If you put it in a basket, you can tie it to the basket and again, hey presto, you have a stabilized orchid. But in a pot, that can be a little trickier and depending on the medium that we want to use and what type of orchid we have, Keeping it stable is crucial in her recovery speed. If the new root tips are not damaged, they will continue to grow and create this beautiful, awesome root system that we all want. So first, let's talk about the medium that is prone to damage root tips. First off, Leca. Yes, this is a very hard and harsh material. It is not flush, it is not glossy, it is quite coarse, quite scratchy. If the root is gently growing over it, everything is okay. But if we move the plant around in the medium, the root tips will brush against the leka and they will get damaged. It's worse when this happens to very, very tiny, very fresh roots because they're not long enough to branch out. If they emerged and they're two, three millimeters long, those roots cannot actually branch out. And when they get damaged, it's game over for them. The orchid needs to put on another root from another part of the stem or the pseudobulb. The second very popular medium is bark. Yet again, bark is not glossy, it's not fluffy 
fluffy or soft in any way, it can seriously damage root tips if the orchid wobbles in the pot way too much. And being that I think bark is still a lot more popular than any other type of medium, it's really important to stabilize orchids that we pot in bark. Even with orchids which are not completely rootless, it's still important for their speed of growth and getting adjusted to your environment that we keep them as still and steady as possible. Now other coarse and hard materials that we use as media can damage roots as well, starting from coconut husk, ending with ceramics, lava rock, whatever is not fluffy, is not flexible but rather rigid can pose threats to root systems. The only medium which, no matter how much we wiggle orchids in, it will never damage roots, is sphagnum moss. Sphagnum moss is just like a blanket, it's very flexible, very fluffy, it does not have a rough or stiff surface, it's like a little sponge. Sphagnum moss and its inorganic counterparts such as synthic or microfiber or whatever we tried along the years, they are way too fluffy and flexible to actually damage root tips. So most of the orchids which will need some staking or some stabilizing are potted in other types of media which are more coarse and more abrasive. So first method, staking. This is my preferred method to stabilize orchids. It's very easy for me to stake orchids. I find the materials readily and there is quite a wide variety of materials that I can use. So pretty much staking refers to a stake which is inserted into the medium and then we tie one of the structures to the stake. And here I have an example, this is a sympodial orchid and when I received it, it did not have flower spikes or anything that I can use as attachments. So what I did was attach the top of the pseudobulbs to the stakes. And now the plant is rather stable, I think I can remove the stakes, so staking it actually maintained it in place and it didn't actually harm anything. Now in my example I am using wooden skewers or barbecue skewers, depending how you want to call them, they are these bamboo skewers which you can buy from supermarkets and other places which sell all sorts of utensils used with cooking. The good thing about these is that you get a lot of them for the price you pay, they're also very very easy to find. The bad thing is they kind of mold. When subjected to so much humidity, you can see in one of my examples here, they will actually form some mold, they will get deteriorated over time and you cannot really use them for all that long. Now obviously I'm not a fan of mold on the orchid roots or near them, However, I cannot say that I've had issues with these stakes, nothing that I can attribute to serious sickness or losing orchids in any way. Also, I typically use them until the orchid gets settled and then I remove them. But yes, quickly after you insert these stakes in the pot, they will start to mold. One workaround this that I did a while back and it actually worked was to put nail polish on the portion which goes in the pot and that actually kept it for a longer period of time in good condition. I cannot say the nail polish affected the root system, I didn't notice anything, so if that is something that you would prefer, you can actually use nail polish to seal off the bamboo stake and it will keep it in good shape for longer. If you don't want to put nail polish on it, I would say it's okay, I don't know, there's always a chance of something bad happening from that mold. I have never experienced it though, I cannot say that I noticed anything super bad happening, so I typically don't go through the trouble, but you can obviously try to seal them. Alternatively, you can use proper orchid stakes. You can keep the stakes the Phalaenopsis or other orchids come with and reuse them with that particular orchid to stabilize it in its new pot. I would not reuse them with other orchids, it's really hard to sterilize them since they are wood or bamboo or whatever they are, but you can actually buy new stakes and I've seen them around in garden centers, at least here in my area. If you cannot find them, do try eBay, Amazon, RepotMe has some, orchid nurseries, some of them have stakes, they are pretty easy to find, they're made out of bamboo wood, but I think they are coated with some sort of paint. It is food dye and sometimes when subjected 
vintage water, it comes off a little bit. I'm using some that are really, really cheap actually. I didn't see anything bad happening with that either. I didn't see green flowers or that dye affecting anything. It's just if you rub it a little, it gets on your finger a little bit. I'm guessing not all steaks will be the same. It's a quality thing, but the cheap ones that I find in my garden center here, they work just fine. They're just not the greatest of quality. So obviously you can use those. They're fresh, they're brand new. And if you really want to take it to the next level, there are some steaks which are from plastic. I cannot find them for the life of me in my region on Amazon or anything. Something that would make sense price-wise as well, of course. But if you have something like that, if you can be inventive, obviously you can use them. There are many things that can actually be used as steaks, plastic, bamboo. The easiest one is the barbecue skewer. So staking an orchid is actually a really easy thing to do. I shall demonstrate an orchid which does not need staking because she's in full sphagnum moss and she already has roots, but I can actually exemplify really well what I mean here. So let's say we want to stabilize this orchid to sit straight. We would go about inserting the stake as close to the pseudobulb or fan or spike or whatever you're staking as close to it as possible. In other videos I told you that you should not put the stake on the sides of the pot because this is usually where the roots circle so you can damage some roots. In the case of rootless orchids, obviously there are no roots on the sides of the pot so you can actually insert it like this if that's how your orchid is arranged or just go as close to the orchid as possible. Let's try to find a good angle maybe this is good, insert the stake and then use a soft tie which can be any type of textile tie, it can even be organic, it doesn't matter, it will not stay wet and just tie the orchid. Now in the case of pseudobulbs that are already mature, I would tie them where the leaf starts, not here because the tie can slip down and in the end not be very, very stable. Also, I would not tie the base of the pseudobulb because we're not actually straightening anything. Also, the orchid is not super stable if most of it just hangs off. So I would tie it from where the leaves start. This is the most stable part of the orchid, of a sympodial orchid, let's say, with pseudobulbs. And I would make either a little knot, either a little bow, but there we go. Also, the tie shouldn't be very loose, but not very tight either, just enough so that the orchid is stable. So this is how you would go about staking an orchid. I hope you can extrapolate from this. If you have multiple pseudobulbs, I would choose the more robust, the tallest maybe pseudobulb, the one that if you would keep in place, would make everything else be in place. If you have even more pseudobulbs on an orchid, obviously you can stake two pseudobulbs for more stabilization. It really depends from case to case, but that's all there is to it. Another way to stabilize some sympodial orchids which have a rhizome is by using a rhizome clip. I don't have one because I don't like this technique, but I can exemplify. I'll try to find some rhizome clips just so you see how they look like. They typically go together better with clay pots, I feel like, because they're designed to clip over the clay pot, but I think you can use them with plastic pots as well. Since I've never used them, I'm not entirely sure, but I know how to DIY a clamp if you cannot purchase one or you don't want to purchase one. If you can DIY the actual rhizome clip, that's great, but you can also use the bamboo skewer. What you need to do is measure the radius of your pot. Then you need to cut from your bamboo skewers the length that will fit tight. You can arrange it in the pot so that it presses down on the rhizome of the orchid. And even though this is a little bit big, if you have multiple pseudobulbs, you can see how this actually maintains the orchid, or actually the rhizome at this particular level, rather than uh, letting it fall out of the pot. And again, you can see my plant is a lot more stable than it used to be with this, let's call it rhizome stabilizer. You can also absolutely use the stakes, which you can buy. Those ones don't really mold. All you need to do is just cut them to fit and you can place them as I just showed you on top of the rhizome, not on the pseudobulb. My orchid is not really centered, so you would want it somewhere here, right in between two pseudobulbs on the rhizome. Um, so not on the orchid, but on the rhizome itself. And that's another technique that is widely used for orchids to stabilize them. Obviously doesn't work all that great with monopodial orchids, it works with rhizomous orchids. 
hence the name rhizome clip. And with this you can be creative as well, if you don't like to stabilize it as such you can poke two holes in the pot, if you have a plastic pot of course, one hole here, one hole here and just run the steak through the holes and you'll have pretty much the same result, it will keep things in place. So it's really up to you, you can use floral wire as well, whatever you think is best for orchids, you can use something like this, I just had it lying around. This is a wire that is covered with silicone and this will not damage anything, it will not burn anything, silicone is actually a really gentle material. So really the possibilities are endless, but you can see how this actually works by stabilizing the actual rhizome, not the suitable. What can we do about monopodial orchids which don't produce pseudobulbs or fans or have a rhizome? Well, simple, we can actually still use the stake method. So what I like to do with Phalaenopsis, even though eventually they will lean over, when we purchase Phalaenopsis they tend to be straight. What I personally like to do is to stake them as well. If they have a flower spike and even if the flowers are done, I just leave a few centimeters, maybe 10 centimeters of the flower spike and just stake the spike to my actual stake and hey presto, the orchid is stable. There are cases in which Phalaenopsis don't have flower spikes to stake them on and in that case I like to use the axis. So I will not stake this particular one because it's already stable and it has a little flower spike here so I don't want to mess around with it too much. It's a novelty so I'm really excited about it. Anyway, what I would do and I shall turn it around to show you, I would go to the opposite side where the orchid has its bias. So let's say this orchid tries to lean forward in that direction. I would go on the opposite side, next to the stem, I would insert the stake in the medium as such, try to make it straight, let's just leave it like that, and then take a soft wire or a soft tie and go under the leaves at one of the locations on the stem and just place the wire or the thread along the stem and make a little knot or a little ribbon or something of the sorts. And this is how I would stake monopodial orchids. With Phalaenopsis it can be a little tricky because the stem is not very long, but with Engracums, where typically the stem is pretty long, it's much easier to work with them like that. And that is pretty much how I would stake a monopodial orchid. If it has a viable flower spike, I can stake it from the spike. If not, the stem is the way to go. Don't stake the leaves, don't stake the roots. They're not good anchors for this. Rhizome clips won't necessarily work with monopodial orchids, especially if they don't have roots. Also, they might have keikis, but the connection between a keiki and the mother plant, it's not as strong as a rhizome. And you can definitely just separate the keiki from the mother plant, which might not be something you wanna do. So rhizome clips, I don't know how you could use them if the orchid has absolutely no roots, but stakes absolutely work. Now there are some other ways in which we can stabilize orchids, which maybe they already have a few roots but they're not completely stable in the pot. And the most recent one you've seen is this plant support, which I purchased and I intend to use with my catacetums. And actually in the comment section, somebody gave me a great idea. I was telling you that this is a little bit too tall and I might have to cut it. Well, another thing that I can do is place a level somewhere lower on this support. So let's say I'm gonna get some string or something and just make another type of support in between the legs, somewhere in the middle, just so I train the new growth properly. That's a great idea. Thank you so much for suggesting it to me. I didn't think about it. Um, so you can definitely use something like this. It's not very, very stable, so it implies that orchids already have some sort of roots. You can also DIY something like this. And there was a tutorial on YouTube, which is not on YouTube anymore. I think Fifi Corina made another tutorial on it. I'll try to find it. I'll link you to it down below. I tried to do it many, many, many years ago, but some things never change. I'm not good at DIY. I'm not good at creating something that looks nice with my hands. Therefore, I prefer to buy them. So check the description down below. You can absolutely DIY something like this. And if I give you a close up so you can see how this is made, maybe you have your own ideas. It's pretty much a circle which you can do from wire and then some legs. So if you're good at DIYs, go for it. DIY it. It's actually a great way to stabilize big unruly orchids. 
I think what I wanted to say is I'm not good at crafting. I can DIY stuff, I have ideas. I'm not good at making them pretty. So anyway, another way we can actually stabilize our kits, this time with multiple pseudobulbs, is by tying the pseudobulbs in between them. And this is a technique that I saw on Ed's channel. It's really, really easy and it works when you have a very unstable orchid that has multiple pseudobulbs. We can stake a pseudobulb or two, but putting eight stakes in one pot, maybe it's not the prettiest thing you've ever seen, right? So we can definitely tie the pseudobulbs together or in between them. And let me see if I can show you. This is a very big plant. I think you can see here, these pseudobulbs are tied together in between them, meaning they will not move around too much. Each pseudobulb holds the other. Of course, if the orchid is completely rootless, we will still need a stake or a rhizome clip or something to tie it from the actual pot. But we can definitely stabilize the pseudobulbs in between them. If one pseudobulb tries to lean more to the side, we can push it back. I think you can see how this has multiple applications actually, not only with orchids which don't have roots or anything of the sorts. This orchid actually has a very good root system because I can totally lift it and it will lift together with the pot. This is something that people used to do back in the old days. This is how you know you repotted correctly, wrong. But anyway, this orchid is really rooted right now and I'm still using this little tie. It's actually keeping my orchid in place. But there you go. I'm sure this will have multiple applications when you try to stabilize orchids. Alrighty, so these have been my preferred way of stabilizing orchids. There are others and if you have ideas, do share them down below in the comment section because we can all get inspired. But before I let you go, I'll mention just another one which I do not do. This was, however, very popular before I started my YouTube channel, so when I was learning. Um, there were these videos in which you'd see people pot orchids in bark or whatever other material and then with a wooden spoon or something, they would compress the medium around the root system and pretty much bang on the sides of the medium just to make the orchid more stable. I would not do that and if it's something that I wouldn't do, I don't want to recommend it to you guys. If you are okay with it, you might have heard about it, you might do it, that's great, more power to you. I don't do it, I don't find it safe, particularly if we want to maintain the root system in good condition, so I cannot say you should do it. But just know that the idea of compressing medium, even sphagnum moss, compressing sphagnum moss around the root system does maintain the orchid more stable. I wouldn't do that, I don't like to compress sphagnum moss. I think it's risky, but anyway, just know that it's out there and some articles and some people do it. I don't know, it's up to you if you wanna follow it. I don't do it. So alrighty guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Hope you've enjoyed it and thank you so much if you decided to visit my Facebook channel as well and give me a like or a follow or whatever. I am trying to learn it and become more active on these platforms and hopefully I shall succeed. So again, thank you so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it. You know the drill, like or dislike this video below, subscribe to my channel for regular orchid videos, tutorials, Q&As and other fun orchid subjects and if you like YouTube to notify you whenever I upload a new video Video, just turn on notifications for my channel. Also, if you are interested in the setup that I use, the lights, whatever, check the description down below. I list everything that I use at the end of my description. And with that said, I'll see you guys next time. Bye!